if you've ever watched documentaries on sharks, manta rays, or other large marine animals, you may have noticed smaller fish swimming alongside them, or even stuck to their skin. Most of you are probably aware that these smaller fish are called remoras, shark suckers, or suckerfish. Have you ever wondered exactly what they are and how they stick to other animals? Let's find out. The inspiration behind this video was a trip I took to Fiji with friends and family a couple of years ago. We did a lot of snorkeling, as well as a fair bit of scuba diving, and encountered a number of free-swimming remoras along the way. At one point we were swimming along a channel known for reef sharks, when I turned around and noticed a remora trying to attach itself to one of my friends. My friend, H, wasn't having a bar of it, so at one point the remora swam over to me to see if I was more amenable to having it stick to me instead. When I got a good close-up look at it, I was reminded of what a cool fish they are. There are eight species of remora, but probably the best known is this particular species, known as the slender or live shark sucker. What you can see in this video still is the feature shared by all remoras, the means by which they stick to other animals, the sucking disc. Remoras use this disc to attach themselves to other animals, such as sharks, rays, turtles, and whales, so they can hitch a free ride. They pick parasites and loose skin off the host animals, and may even get food out of the host feces. The jury's still out as to whether or not they pick up scraps from the host's meals. The sucking disc is formed by a flap of rubbery skin and a series of ridges called lamellae. Let's look at a diagrammatic side view. Here are the lamellae, and here is the flap of rubbery skin. The way it works is the remora pushes the disc against the surface of the other animal and then raises the lamellae, creating suction. Tiny spikes on the edges of the lamellae help with the grip by catching onto the host's skin. If the remora backs up, the suction increases. This is also true if the host animal tries to swim forward. To break free, the remora simply swims forward, causing the lamellae to fold down again, decreasing the suction. So how could something like that possibly evolve? To answer that question, let's start by looking at what sort of fish remoras are and to which other fishes they are most closely related. Remoras belong to a large order of fishes that includes a family of fishes commonly known as jacks or trevallies. But their closest relatives within that larger group are the mahi-mahi and the cobia, which is also known as the black kingfish. Cobia look a bit like a large remora, especially when they're young. They're even striped a bit like a remora as juveniles. But the big difference, of course, is that they lack a sucking disc. I'm not sure why both cobia and some remoras have that side stripe, but it's possible, and this is purely conjecture, that it's to make them resemble cleaner wrasse when they're small, so larger fish are less likely to try to eat them. Anyway, when we look at cobias, we can imagine what early remoras may have looked like. When I say that, I'm not implying that remoras evolved from cobia, but that the common ancestor of these fishes probably looked and acted a little bit like cobia do now. Because one of the interesting things about cobia is that even though they don't have a sucking disc, they still tend to hang around larger marine animals, especially when they're young.
but they aren't averse to catching a free ride when they're older, are they? Riding in the slipstream of larger marine animals, such as manta rays. Watch this large cobia in an aquarium hitch a ride with a manta as the manta comes to the surface to get food. The cobia barely has to move its tail because the manta is a powerful enough swimmer that its slipstream is dragging the cobia around. So what happened to the common ancestor between the cobia and remoras to produce modern-day remoras? Earlier I mentioned that cobia look a fair bit like remoras, but lack the sucker. What they do have, though, is a series of short spines along the back. Those spines are what is left of what was once a spiny dorsal or top fin, which most relatives of the remora and cobia have. The remora, on the other hand, has a sucking disc, but no spiny dorsal fin. Scientists have long hypothesized that the sucking disc evolved from a spiny dorsal fin that moved from the fish's back to the top of the remora's head. And there's evidence supporting that hypothesis. For starters, remoras go through a stage in their early development in which they have a dorsal fin instead of a sucker. Secondly, the fossil of an extinct remora-like fish has been found, which has many intermediate features one would expect. The sucker is further back than it is on modern remoras, and it even has fewer lamellae, which we'd expect because modern remoras have more lamellae on their sucker than the spines on the first dorsal fin of most fishes. The structure of the lamellae themselves is also intermediate on this extinct species, fitting in with the idea that the lamellae are fin spines in which the spiny part has shortened and the base has widened. So it seems fairly clear how the lamellae evolved. But what about the sucker itself? Most of the remora's relatives in the Jack and Trevally family have a groove into which their spiny dorsal fin folds for streamlining. In fact, with most Jacks and Trevallys, it's hard to see their spiny first dorsal fin at all unless the fin is erected, which isn't very often. This is purely conjecture, but it's possible that the early ancestors of the remoras developed shorter spines first just to catch onto the host's skin while hitching a ride. The dorsal fin groove may have created a bit of suction, and the rest evolved from there. The sucker isn't the only adaptation remoras have for their unusual lifestyle. Most fish have an organ called a swim bladder, or gas bladder, which helps them to control buoyancy, but remoras and cobia lack these. The problem with a swim bladder is that when a fish is forced to the surface quickly, the gas in the swim bladder expands with a reduction in pressure forcing the fish's eyes to bulge and its gut or swim bladder to pop out of its mouth. This often happens when fishermen haul a fish from deep water to the surface too quickly. If you want to see examples of this, Google fish barotrauma. If remoras had a swim bladder and were attached to another animal that chose to swim rapidly to the surface, this is exactly what would happen to them. But wait, there's more. You've probably noticed by looking at photographs and watching videos that remoras are as comfortable swimming upside down as they are right side up. And if you look at them from the side, they show what is known as dorsoventral symmetry. This means that the top profile is almost the same as the bottom profile. If I flip this image of a remora upside down, very little changes. 
This means that the remora doesn't have to make many adjustments to its swimming style when it flips upside down. What's more, an interesting thing sometimes happens when a remora is attached to another animal upside down. But in order to explain this, we'll have to look at the typical colorations seen in fishes. Most fishes are dark colored above and lighter below, usually white. This is known as countershading. The purpose of countershading is to make the fish less visible to predators and prey. Sunlight hits the water from above, lightening the top of the fish and producing a shadow on its underside. If fishes were uniformly colored, the light from above would cause the top to go lighter and the bottom to go darker, making the fish particularly visible. What countershading does is counter that effect, making the fish less visible, especially from directly above or directly below. Years ago, while working at an aquarium, I noticed something interesting with one of the remoras. When it attached to sharks from underneath, its belly was white, which is typical countershading. But when it was attached to the top of a shark and stayed there for a while, the remora would darken its belly, which is reverse countershading. Here's the same remora stuck to the bottom of a shark and then to its back. To finish the video, I'm going to answer the question you probably had in your head while watching some of the video clips shot in Fiji, and that is, what's that little thing stuck to the remora? Well, it turns out that it's an even smaller remora. Until that trip, I was unaware that remoras will even stick to each other. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.